I'm Nancy Sherrick, the mathematician behind Representations of the Braid Group, the winning video of Science Magazine's 2017 Dance Your PhD competition. This is a behind the scenes look of the math of our video. So the best place to start is, what are the braid groups? Now, the dreaded question a mathematician gets asked is, why do you do what you do, or what are the applications of your work? Well, I study braids just because they're pretty, but let me fill you in a little bit on how my work actually applies to the real world. So, knots happen all over the place. They, you see them in your pocket when your headphones get tangled up. You see them on artwork all around the world. And so, we want to study knots and what makes things get tangled up. So one thing we can do is rearrange the strands of the knot so that we organize the crossing information and then pull just the crosses out and what we have left is a braid. And now we can study braids instead of the knots. So we can think of braids individually or we can collect them up in a way that gives us a deeper understanding of what's going on. And it turns out that a really good way to do that is to collect the braids up that all have the same number of strands. So let's see. If we fix the number two and we look at all the braids we can get with just two strands, it turns out there's not that many ways to do it. So I have sort of a fundamental crossing. I have two strands, they can cross in the right-handed direction or the left-handed direction. And then my only options are just to keep twisting and keep twisting. And those are all the braids that have two strands. But if I add a third strand, I can now get some more complicated braids to happen. And the reason for that is there's sort of two fundamental little braids. I can swap the first two strands, or I can swap the second two strands. And again, I can always swap in the opposite direction. Now, if I stack little pieces of that form together, I can get lots of complicated braids with three strands. But we can keep going. If you give me the number four, and we look at all the braids that have four strands, we can get some pretty complicated braids to go on. And again, we have sort of three little fundamental braids, twisting the first two strands, twisting the middle two, or twisting the last two. And then stacking these pieces together, we can create braids of all sort of complexity that we want. And there's nothing that tells us we have to stop at four. If you give me any positive integer n, I can collect up all of the braids that have n strands, and we call that bn. Now, this idea of stacking pieces together to get more braids was depicted in the video when we had dancers on the same silk, dancing one on top of the other. We stacked the dancers. So now that we've grouped the braids, we want to look at relationships between the braids and see what sort of rules they might have to follow. So let's just keep one thing in mind. While these are pictures drawn on the board, we really do want to think about braids as strands that are tangled in the air. And so we're being true to the reality of what would happen if I had tangled strands. So the first rule that we see is called far commutativity. And what this deals with is changing the order of the crossings within a braid. And sometimes that changes the braid, and sometimes it doesn't. So let's sort of try to understand when it would change the braid and when it wouldn't. So if I have two sets of strands that are disjoint, like they're far apart from each other, they don't interact, then changing the order that the crossings occur actually keeps the braid the same. It might look a little different, I've drawn it a different way, but I didn't actually change the braid in reality. I just sort of drew it a little differently. But compared to this scenario, here I have two crossings that share a strand. So the yellow strand appears in both crossings. If I try to change the order that the crossings occur, then I actually change the braid. And here's how you can see it. So the yellow strand started in the first position and down at the bottom ended in the third position. While over here it started in the first position but ended in the second position. So I really have gotten a different braid. So the way we showed this in the video, the first part we had was two dancers on separate silks and they glided and danced past each other because they weren't interacting. But then we had another image where there was three dancers in two silks that were all tangled up and they couldn't slide past each other. And that's what's happening here. 
that if the, if the strands are tangled together, the crossings cannot slide past each other. We really do get a different braid if we were to change the order of the crossings. Now there's one other braid relation, well it's called the braid relation, and I encourage you to go look it up. Lots of mathematicians use the internet to do their research, so see if you can figure out what the braid relation is. We are making a second math dance video and we need your help. Go to gofundme.com slash mathdance to support our next project.